Most of the time we humans enjoy a privileged position within nature. Throughout our history, we have managed to separate ourselves from most predators, secure in our homes and urban environments. However, under the appropriate circumstances, we can find ourselves in situations confronting animals with sharp claws, roaring and displaying their teeth, much like the situations Homo sapiens faced on a daily basis. When we mention the term man-eating lions, the renowned lions of Tsavo come to mind, which spawned movies, books, and gained global recognition. However, what few are aware of is that man-eating lions have consumed thousands of individuals in various regions of Africa, and the Tsavo lions represent only a small fraction of the true terror these animals have inflicted and continue to inflict on the continent since Europeans commenced documenting African life in the mid-19th century. The very term man-eater instills fear in the hearts of many. Numerous human fatalities caused by large felines were attributed to lions in particular. Yet the significant question arises, why? What prompts a lion to kill and devour human beings? Why did an entire pride of lions develop such a craving for human flesh? And what triggered this shift in their choice of prey? The conjecture prior to the publication of Colonel John Peterson's book, The Man-Eaters of Tsavo, in 1907, proposed that worn-out teeth or toothlessness constituted the primary factor behind these attacks. Another explanation was that old or sick lions resorted to hunting humans since they could no longer pursue larger prey such as zebras and antelopes. According to wildlife researchers in 2004, a lion accused of killing 35 people in Tanzania may have exhibited this behavior due to a toothache. Over a span of 20 months, the lion attacked its victims in eight villages in the rough district. It was slain in April 2004, and subsequent investigations aim to unravel the reasons behind its unprecedented number of human kills. Researchers suggest that the lion stopped hunting buffalo and turned to hunting humans because it discovered that human flesh was easier to chew and caused less pain. When the lion's skeleton was examined, deep flesh was found in one of its molars, which was fractured into several fragments. This lion likely experienced substantial pain, particularly when chewing, remarked Half Balduz, coordinator of the German Development Cooperation Agency GTZ's Wildlife Protection Program which has collaborated with the Tanzanian government for 17 years to safeguard wildlife. Psychologist Bruce Peterson and dentist Ellis Neyberg managed to establish that two man-eating lions responsible for devouring over 30 people in Kenya in 1898 suffered from toothaches. This hindered them from pursuing tougher meat sources than human flesh. However, the notion that only weakened lions consume humans is gradually being discarded. The same zoologist Bruce Peterson who conducted several studies on lions near the Sava River where Kenyan felines preyed on humans in the 19th century, now a functioning park, made another discovery. Among the last 23 lions killed by forest guards for attacking humans or livestock, only a quarter had dental problems, aside from an elderly female that attacked a child and two others that attacked buffalo. All the animals were healthy males under five years old, fully capable of pursuing their usual prey. Here is the alternative explanation. Young lions expelled from their prides venture into human-inhabited areas where they increasingly encounter human populations, making it difficult to resist the allure of easy prey. Over time, they develop specialized hunting skills. An example of this was the fatalities that occurred near the city of Nyombe. A series of brutal lion attacks devastated populations residing in lion territories in Tanzania between 1932 and 1945. A group of 15 lions learned to hunt humans and merciless, slaughtered approximately 1,500 people for 13 uninterrupted years. The tribal members were so terrified of these man-eating lions that they dare not even speak their names, believing that uttering their names would summon them. Typically, lions hunt in packs at night and rest under the sun after their nocturnal kill. However, the Nyambi lions defied convention. These animals became so specialized in consuming humans that, in stark contrast to their usual behavior, they reversed their hunting schedule. They rested during the night and hunted during the day, when lion attacks were less anticipated. They also learned to avoid detection by dividing into smaller groups and launching multiple attacks simultaneously. Furthermore, these lions acquired the ability to climb onto the roofs of straw huts, requiring minimal effort to access the enclosures where the victims sought refuge. The reputation of these genius lions, with skills unseen in other feline species, induced daily fear among the villagers, who lived under constant threat of being devoured. This is regarded as the most severe lion attack in history and one of the most devastating animal assaults ever recorded, known as the Nyong Man-Eaters. It was only after claiming approximately 1,500 human lives 
that the lions were ultimately exterminated by the esteemed British hunter George Rushmi, who also had to contend with resistance from the villagers of the same community where the lions had preyed on people. The villagers opposed the idea of killing the lions, believing that these were no ordinary lions, but were under the control of a local tribe's witch doctor named Mata Mula Manjera, who had sent the animals as retribution against his people after being dismissed from his post. Killing the lions, they feared, would enrage Mata Mula and intensify the curse against the tribe. In reality, most cases of animal attacks that result in the consumption of humans in Africa stem from the belief that these animals possess spiritual powers and are sent to punish people. We have previously produced a video on our channel specifically addressing this topic, and I will provide a link in the video description if you wish to learn more. Of course, there are more rational explanations for the Nyambi incident. Unlike other cases, research provided a clear answer in this particular instance. The bovine plague virus, responsible for decimating the cattle population, compelled the British colonial government to issue an order to cull zebras, antelopes, and wildebeests in the wild in a desperate attempt to control the disease outbreak, as it was believed that the virus spread through these animals as well. Consequently, African lions confronted a scarcity of prey, lacking biological weapons such as fangs and claws, and being easily traceable, humans became the perfect substitute. Thus, the Nyombi lions became accustomed to devouring humans in order to stave off starvation. Although the events between Sapo and Nyombi may be the most prominent and widely known, authentic reports of lions consuming humans still exist. Numerous brutal lion attacks go unreported, many of which transpire in rural areas where obtaining accurate statistical figures for such incidents is understandably challenging, leaving much room for guesswork and speculation. One such case involved a horrific attack that would likely have gone unnoticed if not for the inquisitiveness of a National Geographic journalist who covered the story at the time. On April 10, 2008, Musafins and Shabami were cycling with their friend Muna when a lion weighing approximately 140 kilograms began pursuing them. Musafini witnessed from a distance as his friend was attacked and devoured by the lion. The animal sank its teeth into his friend's neck, severing his spinal cord instantly and ending his life. Before the lion proceeded to tear apart and consume his friend's flesh, Musafini fled the scene. Witnessing the lion's gruesome consumption left deep scars in Musafini's mind, haunting him to this day. This was just another tragic case of a lion attack resulting in the loss of a human life, one of hundreds that occur annually in Tanzania, with many going unrecorded. The fact that man-eating lions leave virtually no traces of their victims, including shoes, blood-soaked clothes and bones, adds to the uncertainty surrounding the actual number of casualties. Man-eating lions leave no records of their killings. Renowned big game hunter Peter Capstick mentioned that aside from the man-eaters of Sapo and Nyambi, there are countless lesser-known instances of lions attacking humans. According to him, man-eaters undoubtedly claimed the lives of tens of thousands of people in just the last century. The most disheartening aspect is that the true number of lions like these that have killed will forever remain unknown. Moreover, when it came to hunting lions that had developed skills for preying on humans, the task was more arduous than hunting normal lions, as these big cats had become adept at eluding the hunter's strategies, evading capture skillfully for extended periods until finally apprehended. It is crucial to remember that we are not discussing typical lions, but rather man-eating lions that have developed specific skills for hunting humans, such as climbing onto roofs, for instance. Simpson, a conservationist and expert tracker, highlights that while the number of human fatalities resulting from lion attacks has increased significantly, lions in the wild have experienced a drastic decline, and the casualties they cause, albeit greater than before, pale in comparison to the number of lions killed by human hands. Most villagers residing in lion territories understand that, at times, the loss of one of their own, no matter how tragic, is the price they pay for coexisting with these formidable predators. Even amidst mourning, some of these families accept the consequences as an inevitable toll for inhabiting the realm of kings. After reviewing this video, I have two questions. What prompts lions to develop a preference for human flesh? Is it due to their inability to hunt their typical prey? Or do they realize that humans lack the speed and biological weaponry possessed by creatures such as those armed with claws or horns? Are these isolated incidents of fatality? Or do predators on land instinctively seek to dethrone humanity from its position atop the food chain? What are your thoughts on this matter? Let's engage in a discussion. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Your support means the world to us. If you enjoyed this video, check out the suggested playlist for more compelling content.
consider sharing this video on your social media platforms to raise awareness about the delicate balance between humans and wild nature.